Well, amid all the tragedy and upheaval created by the COVID-19 pandemic, we also learned a great deal about the disparities in our economy, perhaps none more so than the disproportionate impact on Black-owned businesses. In the aftermath of 2020, Black business owners began to increase, but the need for structural changes at the federal, state and local level hasn't dissipated. With that in mind, where are we now? Shark Tank star and entrepreneur Damon John has been a trailblazer for some time. His Black Entrepreneur's Day will return for a fourth year on November 1st. It's run in collaboration with the NAACP and sees black entrepreneurs and small business owners across the country apply for a $25,000 grant, plus the opportunity to appear alongside Damon himself. So how far have we come? Well, let's get to Damon John, Shark Group CEO, to break some of this down for us. Welcome back to the show here. So talk about this day. And obviously this came originally out of what we saw from the fallout from George Floyd's death. So where are we now in terms of now post COVID, the disparities for black business owners? Uh, well, thank you very much. Um, I mean, things are still the same actually there. They may actually be getting, unfortunately, a little worse because uh, there was a lot of people who were had a pent up frustration or they felt they weren't doing enough. A lot of the corporate citizens and now they're pulling back a little bit. They've not totally abandoned, but they felt like, well, let's move on to other what they believe are critical issues. OK, with that and with all the interest rates uh, rising and. Uh, you know, some of the stuff you were talking about with consumers, um, you know, they're 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 questioning their position of where they lay their money. Uh, however, the, the same thing is still happening with, um, you know, African-American consumers. They're getting uh, they're getting the last bite of the apple. They don't have as many resources and they don't come from legacy wealth, though. It's kind of like playing Monopoly and never getting two hundred dollars every time you pass go. Uh, Damon, you, you mentioned uh, some of the uh, sort of corporate initiatives pulling back um, four years yeah. into this. Uh, there was some concern on the back of the Supreme Court decision uh, striking down affirmative action that this would kind of give cover for companies to say, look, we can scale back our DEI efforts because um, race shouldn't necessarily be a factor. I, I wonder, I know we're talking about entrepreneurs here, but I wonder if you have seen a direct effect there. I mean, what are you hearing from companies who are saying this is maybe not the number one issue for employees anymore? Yeah, I've, I've heard that they just, listen, it's a big world. You have a lot of issues that, that, that people want to be part of, right? You have LGBTQ+, plus, you have veterans, you have handicapped, you have a lot of other issues. So it's not that they have a bad intent. However, uh, the studies have just, let's be greedy about it. The studies have shown with the diverse uh, workforce. And if you look and think like the people you serve, that creates innovation and it's 18% more profitable to the bottom line. Right. So we are not even thinking about purely just from the aspect of uh, is it the right thing to do? But there would be no FUBU if, you know, uh, I didn't work with other, uh, you know, cultures and manufacturers to create a FUBU or the industries that we see today. There would be no Sean Puffy Combs, you know, Russell Simmons, Quincy Jones and various other things. Um, so and, and, and we you even talk about the gender. You know, I believe that. And as you've been seeing, that, that women and African Americans get probably about four percent of venture capital. Um, but when you look at technology that is broken down the walls, when you look at crowdfunding, we get about thirty percent of the capital due to breaking down the walls. So I think it's just in the best interest of the business's bottom line, and we're seeing that now because if you look at the general Chase and Shopify, who've been with me since day one, their numbers have exploded. Lowe's, T-Mobile, and Trine, and we have new members like McDonald's. You know, the first year, we, uh, our first year winner of a grant, Harlem Chocolate Factory, well, she's opening now in JFK International Airport, right? So we're seeing some of these uh, seeds that have been planted four years ago, we're seeing them start to blossom. And, and that's where I want to concentrate more on the positive aspect of it. And Damon, you raise an interesting point about Black Entrepreneurs Day, not so much about being a cause, but really giving normalcy, giving, you know, the same opportunities that any other entrepreneur should have. What are your expectations for where things go from here and what you'd like to see from a lot of these companies? I mean, considering how many people are applying for these grants. Well, you know, a lot of these, uh, most of these people uh, or most of these organizations that I work with, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase and uh, The General and T-Mobile, they already have resources set aside. And that's the beautiful thing about this. Whether you win the $25,000 grant and we have a uh, various uh, amount of grants being given away, the resources are there. So you don't have to win something. You can go in and find things in one place. 
you know, when you look at J.P. Morgan Chase, they have banks and bankers in the community. But me, even growing up, I didn't look at a bank as someplace that I belonged. I went to a check cash in place right next door. I played, paid 6%. When the banker was literally in the bank so they can find a new Damon John before he or she is Damon John, right? And when you have McDonald's trying to get new franchise owners, so it really is breaking the stigma of the African-Americans who have been or the perception where they felt like they did not belong. And there are these organizations and corporate citizens who do want to make a difference. So it's on both sides. Either you have the resource, you're giving it, or the community doesn't trust you because they've been let down uh, so many times. But a company like Nike, they're always on the right side of the debate, and that's why they yeah. have this rabid customer. Well, we look forward to the additional ideas to come out on year four of Black Entrepreneurs Day. Damon John, Chuck Group CEO, thanks so much for joining us today. And thank you for always supporting us. Thank you.